In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the OLI Chemistry Wizard inside Aspen Plus to create a chemistry model, and then how to update that model inside Aspen Plus, especially when we want to switch from a, the aqueous thermodynamic framework to an MSD thermodynamic framework. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the OLI Chemistry Wizard. We'll do that through Program Files, and here we have OLI Systems. We're going to select the OLI Engine and in Aspen Plus and the Chemistry Wizard. This is the start of the OLI Chemistry Wizard. We're going to enter in a standard OLI name. I'm actually going to call this model AQ Test, which is just a the designated that is an aqueous model. We have our current working folder here, and I am currently using a special folder for this uh, demonstration. To begin, we'll click the next button, and we're going to select the OLI aqueous thermodynamic fragment that's the default, and we'll click next to begin our chemistry selection. To begin the chemistry selection, we always have to have water, so we're going to start by clicking the add button. This will bring up a series of uh, components. We're going to add a very specific list. We're going to start off with sodium chloride and we'll just see that it's highlighted. I can either double click it here or click the add button. I'll use the add button here. We're going to put in KCl, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, and carbon dioxide. We click add and then we'll close it and we see that the components have been added to the chemistry wizard. We'll click the next button. This allows us to add redox and other types of uh, component data. We're not going to do that for this tutorial. We'll select the next button. Here we can tailor the chemistry. We can add and remove solids. We can add some solid inert info. We can add or remove phases. We're not going to do any of that for this tutorial. We'll click the next button. This is a component screen where we're going to define some Aspen names. Right now, the Aspen IDs are assigned by OLI systems, and these correspond to the components that will be displayed in Aspen Plus. They can have aliases. It's okay if they're blank, but we'll go ahead and fill them in. I'll just add the magnesium chloride field and calcium chloride field. This is just for Aspen naming purposes. OLI doesn't actually use those names. We'll then click the Next button. We will create a BKP file. By default, it will have the same name as the chemistry name. I don't want to do that in this particular case. I'm just going to get rid of the aqueous, and the backup file will just be called test. When I click Next, that will be created. We'll click the Generate Files Now button. That actually creates the chemistry model. And then we'll click Finish. And you can see that this is the data structure for the current Aspen Plus model. Okay, what we've done here is we've we've opened up the BKP file that we just created, test.bkp, and created a simple flash two block. Uh, we do have made it the largest size we can so it shows up properly on a web browser. Uh, some features to point point out here, here's the input stream. Uh, it's 25 degrees degrees one atmosphere and we've put in a hundred uh, kilomoles per hour of water, 0.01 moles of CO2 and all of the other halide salts we put in 0.1 moles. And you can see here we have calcium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium chloride and as we scroll down the list way down is magnesium chloride. The block is set to be isothermal 25 degrees one atmosphere there's nothing special here this is all standard Aspen uh, steps. One thing we would like to show out is the data under properties that the current name of the model is selected here as AQ test. That's the one we created earlier. It's actually the DBS file stored in the same folder as the BKP file. We are almost ready to run. OLI recommends the following. Under data and setup, we always turn the diagnostics up for the simulation to the maximum. We get a lot of data printed to the history file, and we get some additional data to the control panel 
uh, when we're running so that gives us a lot more information we recommend that be done it does not have to be done we also tend to run from the control panel so we get to see what's going on directly and we're just going to go ahead and run it right here and you see it runs very very quickly the thing to point out for the aqueous model we'll actually look at the input stream here is that under the results we have the hydrogen ion it sorts very low in the list you see they're not very solids here, here are the ions and there is the hydrogen ion and we're just going to point that out, that will become important in just a few moments we'll go ahead and save this file and we'll get ready to go ahead and build an MSV version of the same file to create an MSE model we just have to follow the same procedure we've started the OLI chemistry wizard here and we're just going to call it our MSE model MSE test and we'll follow the same steps we did before the only difference is we're now going to click the radio button MSE uh, under our thermodynamic framework We'll then go ahead and select next and then add our components. We're going to add the same components we used before. Sodium chloride, potassium chloride, magnesium chloride, and you notice I'm typing in lower case, yet we still find the components. Calcium chloride and carbon dioxide. These are all there. You notice I didn't actually click the add button. I actually just pressed the enter key. That also enters the components into the model. I'll have select the next button. Again, we're not going to pick any special phase phenomena. The component list is going to remain the same as it was before. And as before, we're going to add the aliases. The next step is different. You notice that we've created the, a new name. We're going to keep that name in this case. This creates a, an empty BKP file. So when I select next, We'll be able to generate the files. That tells us it's been created. And when I select finish, we'll see that the folder has been updated with the new uh, chemistry. This BKP file is different than the original one and contains no flow sheets. So we'll go ahead and now we'll start the import process for this new model. okay we've reopened the test BKP file that we had before everything here is exactly the same nothing's been different what we're going to do now though is we're going to import the other chemistry and we select file then import and we're going to import from a BKP file this D test BKP file is the current file this is the one that we just created for MSE so we're going to go ahead and select open and we have all of these components these are new components and old components what I usually do is I select all of them I click one of them select control A that gets them all then I select replace and I've replaced all of these components with the components from the new model so I'll go ahead and click OK for this we get the message about maintaining databases I always select OK for that I get the warning message that the input has changed the one thing I do want to show here is once again if I go back to data and under properties you'll see that the chemistry model has changed but you'll also notice that the old model is still there it's actually still in the file all we've done is update it this actually will cause a warning later on in this process once again I will pop open the control panel and I'm going to run it you get all of those warning messages I'm going to scroll back up here a second and it's going to tell you that these components actually are already there and it's going to take the second one that's good that's uh, the second one we added now for all blocks that use OLI it doesn't really matter we're using our thermodynamic properties in our database however if you're using RADFRAC the column program that's, a, that's these guys here those chemistry paragraph information are important and you're going to have to do some subsequent modifications to this BKP file to make that work you're gonna to have to do some uh, chemistry model paragraph editing uh, through components to delete the duplicate species that's beyond the tutorial right now however I want to go back and show you the input 
we'll look at the results again here. And I once again I will scroll down down to the ions. And you can see here are the ions. What's new here is that the hydrogen ion is zero because hydrogen ion doesn't exist in MSE. But the hydronium ion, which appears at the very bottom of the list, does. And actually has the same composition or nearly so as the hydrogen ion did in the previous run. So this is an MSE model. We've swapped models to MSE. Everything here is identical, not identical, but equivalent to the aqueous model. And this is how we import an MSE model. You could start from scratch. That's a lot of work on a big flow sheet. Or uh, do a lot of copying and pasting. That also works. There's more than one way to create an MSE model inside the aqueous model that you created. And it is actually possible to run both. Uh, in the same flow sheet. But that's beyond this demonstration. We'll go ahead and save the file. It is our recommendation though that before you started this work that all of your files would have been backed up. This concludes the tutorial about how to switch from the aqueous model to a thermodynamic, a MSE thermodynamic model inside the same Aspen flow sheet.